What's up everybody, Y Davis here, back with another review. Tell me, showing you guys the Air Jordan 17 All-Star Lightning. All right guys, and these are officially come out today for a retail price of $300, just that's right. But the current resale is going for about $450 to $500. Don't know how fast or how long this shoe will take to go down in price. Um, unfortunately, these was not available on the sneakers app. I don't know if they will have a later date on the sneakers app, but as of right now, there is no release for the sneakers app. The only way to get these today was the street stores outside, which means boutiques. Now, recently, we have been hearing a lot about Nike moving away from Foot Locker and trying to build their own stores in the U.S. and things like that. So um, I'm not really sure why they didn't give it to Foot Lockers and things like that, but you know, it is what it is. Now, with that being said, it's been almost 8,000 days since we've seen this shoe. Fun fact of the day, my second ever Jordan was the Air Jordan 17 Wizard. If you guys have watched some of my older videos, I have told you guys about this story. So um, it was very exciting for me to get this shoe today. Shout out to Hush Like Boutique. Um, and I was so happy to get this shoe today. This was actually harder for me to get than the J Balvin. I had the opportunity to get the J Balvin, but um, when I was trying to get this shoe today, and I didn't think I was gonna get it. People weren't offering me this shoe at all. So this shoe was technically harder for me to get. And with the resale value and the, how much this shoe costs shows how hard this shoe was to get today. So um, let's get into it guys. So on the front of the box here, this is what the box will look like. It's a lot bigger than what we see on the original Air Jordan 17, even though this shoe in particular didn't come in a box like this. So, you know, this is the first time we are seeing the All-Star Lightning in this box with the briefcase, but I did go to size 9.5 on this. We don't get just retail on the box. I'm gonna open this box up in front of you guys so you guys can see how it looks. Okay, so just pull this flap up. All right, I'm gonna do this in front of you guys so you guys can see. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram because I already did one on there, but you guys would have seen it first. But this is what happens when you open up the top of the box. We do get a stamp right there in blue and we get a sticker right there as well. This comes in a big box as you guys can see. Open up the front flap and you get to slide this thing out and it comes with this bubble wrap on it and this extra layer of cardboard on the inside of that. I'm gonna put this on the ground. We also get like a serial number on the second cardboard right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a serial number on there. All right, um, so yeah, I'm gonna move this to the side real fast. But man, this is the box right here, the briefcase. Take off this bubble wrap. And you guys should have just seen my face opening this for the first time. I mean, this is what Jordan Brand needs to do. Bring back, you know, the boxes, bring back the cards, bring back the memorabilia because these are the things we want to see. Now, this is the box here, a lot bigger than the original briefcase. But I'm going to show you guys, turn it around for you guys, show you guys the bottom of it. Just so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, the top did come with this on it. All right, but it already had fell off. So just to show you guys, uh, it feels like a very good quality box and I'm gonna open it up in front of you guys right here. So, you ready? One, two, three, boom. Here it is, man. Put back these papers and voila, man. Fire, what do you guys think? Is it a copper drop for you guys? Regular tissue paper on the inside. You do get a white and green sticker on the inside of here as well. And you guys can just see the black eggshell. You know, what it looks like it's in there. You know, you see eggs sitting in or whatever. But uh, this is the shoe right here, guys. What do you think? Is it a cop or a drop for you guys? Let me know in the comments box below. I mean, growing up, you know, like I said, this is my second Jordan ever, the Air Jordan 17. So it has a very big, you know, spot in my life and, you know, history behind shoes. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though we don't get a strout on the shoe, I believe that's what it's called. That comes on the front half of the shoe, which came on the Wizards pair. We don't get that on these lows right here. But since I never reviewed uh, Air Jordan 17, I'm going to be going into some fun facts. So, so this shoe was designed by Wilson Smith III. He also designed the Uptempo. I'll show you guys some pictures right here. Now, this shoe may look familiar to a lot of people, but if it doesn't, it kind of reminds me of the Air Jordan 14. Now, the reason I do say that is because if you guys look at the top of this shoe right here, you guys can see that it has like this upper half to make it look like a high top. But once you fold this half down on the shoe, it does look like a low top 14. We also don't get dust bags, so they took that away from the shoe as well. So this is how you normally get the effect of the 17 looking like a low. But if you keep it up like this, you may think it was a high. All right, but if you, you know, lower down the sleeve that it has on it, 
it does remind me of a 14 because of the way it is shaped and because you know the middle of the shoe but it's not advertised like that so a lot of people don't know you can actually wear them like this i will show you guys how these do look you know on feet with the sleeve inside but you know that's just one fact and the all-star game when he actually wore these he actually missed the dunk and he had like an interview after that just talking about how the dunk and he handled it so well now looking at the bottom of the shoe this is where the golf history comes into the shoe if you guys look at the bottom of the shoe right here you guys can see that the traction pads have a little bit of length to them now if you guys haven't watched me review any of my air jordan ones or air jordan one golf shoes they do kind of stick out from the bottom of the shoe you can't really feel this when they are on the ground now remember me referencing this shoe comparing it to the 14 if you guys look on the insoles they have similar insoles as the 14s all right but i do feel like the insoles on the 14 do have a little bit better you know cushioning on the bottom of it as i remember it from the laney's and recent shoes like that so i'm kind of disappointed that we did get these regular insoles on these i will say on the inside of the box i missed this earlier you know on the older pair the original pair we did have like a cd rom cut out right here on the inside of the box i feel like you know even though in this time i feel like the cardboard box is a little bit better condition i'm happy that they gave us a bigger briefcase than it originally came in even though this is a low so they did hook us up on that part but they could have put like the last dance or something in here or maybe just like a little card or a little bit of information about the shoe like they did the other shoes but you know it is what it is um they're moving forward i'm happy to see something like this come out you know what i mean it's my first time ever purchasing a shoe like this higher than the 14 i haven't had a chance to cop the 15 that was my first ever jordan in history but uh looking at let's talk about the shoe guys i don't want to bore you guys i just want to talk about the shoe now so looking at the bottom of the shoe here we do get some high traction pads on this shoe which is in gray yellow if you guys look on the middle right there it's like a hair and bone i can't tell if that's carbon fiber under there it's yellow translucent looking at the midsole of the shoe here towards the outsides of both midsoles we see the jump man in black and we get these chrome hits on the eyelids now if you guys look on the middle panels unfortunately we don't have any 3m hits where that gray is i lid, the very top eyelid it says jordan spelled out and chrome same thing on the inside of the shoe here what do you guys think about it is it a copper drop for you guys let me know in the comments box below i don't see any stitching errors or glue stains at all $300 shoe and you can definitely see why it is $300. I will say the shoe does have a little bit more weight to it than other shoes, but they are pretty comfortable on feet. So make sure you guys take out the whole video for the sides and sips. Looking at the outsides of the shoe here, if you guys look towards the back where you see that blue tape where it says peel, it does say Jordan on the outside, but it says peel off on the sticker. Now I'm not gonna be peeling this off because you know once you get the chrome messed up, it turns into like a pinkish color and it just looks really nasty. I'm just gonna keep it like this. I kind of like the way it looks with the blue hit, but you know, to each his own. Let me know if you guys are gonna take off the tape or just keep it on there until it falls off on its own. Looking at the toe box on these, these will crease up pretty easy on you. I would suggest you guys to put some wearable shoes on these. If you guys see me touching down on this leather, it just creases up right away. And you know, these are gonna look crazy once you mess them up. But um, to me, this is really like a collection piece. I felt like Jordans have always been a collection item in my opinion. That's why it always takes me so long to wear them. Or at least when I was younger, it took me so long to wear them. I just used to be amazed and obsessed with them. Even though these shoes do have like a brand new smell to it, it's still not like how it was back in the day where you could just smell it just on your foot as you're walking throughout the day for the next week or whatever. But looking at the midsole here, we do see the 23 logo. You see a little bit of yellow creeping up from the bottom of the shoe. We do only get one set of laces on these and they come with some black laces and a black mesh tongue, but the tongue is like split open. At the bottom half of the tongue right here, we have Jordan written out, all right? On the inside of the shoe here, we do see a two, three on both shoes in yellow. Taking out both insoles, I already showed you guys this a little bit earlier, but it is black on there. We get the sizing sticker over top of the logo, which is a yellow jump man. All right, and the back of this is gray, not the best insole. And underneath the actual insole, it is white, but a stamp in there and some black stitching. Now this shoe is snug, you know what I mean? Um, so go up half a size. I'm gonna be showing you guys my footage in the toe box a little bit later on, showing you guys how it feels. But in my opinion, you guys look at the inside of this shoe right here. It is pretty snug in the way it is made. You guys can see that it is snug and the toe box isn't that big. All right, but the production dates on this was 11 15 23 to 01 16 24. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at that real fast. Coming towards the back of the shoes here, we see the Jordan logo in gray, and that's pretty much gonna do it for these shoes, guys. All right, I'll show you guys my foot in the toe box right now. Okay, guys, this way, like on feet, pretty clean in my opinion. Now, I'm a true size nine, I'm gonna get nine and a half in all my shoes. I did get these shoes half a size up. I feel like this shoe is runs kind of snug. So go up half a size minimum, in my opinion. You can go to the size. It may even, you know, 
fill up some of the space because this is a low it may fill up some of the space here but if you have a thicker ankle or you know don't mind this space right here go up half a size in my opinion once again now i will say this shoe does run kind of snug all right so on the inside i do feel a little bit of the pressure right here i have a little bit of space for my hand to push before it touches my foot there as you guys can see when it goes in and comes back out but as you guys can see on this leather toe box right here you know these will crease up pretty easily so this is my foot right here on this material and this is half a size up but anyway um these will crease up pretty easily on you you can put some more shoe cheese in these i feel like when i try to put my toes to the roof of the shoe it is a lot of space in there kind of feels like if you try to do it in a foam runner you try to put your foot up in the air um i don't know if that was a good correlation because you guys probably don't even wear foam runners but um anyway if you want to put some web shoes in these go up half a size so it doesn't hurt your foot and you have a little space to move around in there unlaced they feel really nice i don't have any slippage whatsoever so you know this emptiness space right here that you guys see doesn't affect how the shoe fits if you guys are wondering tied up i feel like they feel really nice you can also feel the shoe come together really nice and tight up here um it feels really nice in my opinion the traction on these feel great as well i'm definitely not going to be playing basketball in these though um this is literally like a collection piece for me um even today it was just very very hard to get this shoe so i'm gonna show you guys these like some different pants options right now Okay, guys, so if you guys like this video, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, show your boy some love, and stay tuned.